Good morning, friends. So glad to have you here with me. Today we're going to play with color burst powder. And I have several different colors, but I want to play with the Moroccan ones first. Let's see. That's Caribbean. That's what this is. Um, fresh florals. Okay. Cadmium scarlet, olive green, curulean blue, gamboge. I don't know how to say that. Burnt umber and lamp black. Well, we may not play with the lamp black, but anyway, this is just a quick play and I tossed it all on and this is what it did. And that is the, um, this one is the uh, Caribbean colors, which is fuchsia, tangerine, lime green, chartreuse, chartreuse <laughs> turquoise, and orchid. So it makes a nice um, piece. This is the back of it. Got some beautiful images here, almost like, a, I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost like the petal of um, iris. So very pretty. It, I mean, it does have some beautiful colors in it. Um, this is not the idea to put it all on one sheet. Now this one here is, um, I think, brusho paints. And it's similar. Um, you sprinkle it on and put water over it. Um, you can see I got it a little thick in places. Uh, and I just threw all the colors on and one of them turned out green and blueish, and one was kind of a purple and orange and pink. But they all have little bits of the same color. I just went heavier with the purple and the reds and pinks in here. And of course I went heavier with the blues and um, I think there was a brown I used and the greens and yellow over here. Those are brush show paints. But today we're going to play with these and this is the color burst powder. This is another thing that I did was um, when it was wet I put this crunchy paper in it which is tracing paper. So I brought along some tracing paper today and I thought, you know, this will make a nice page in a journal and it'll be a nice little crunchy page, won't it? So it'll be really, really fun to use in a journal. Here's the other one. I just wanted to see what it would come up with. Now I did take on this one, you can't tell it, but I did take um, these wet wipes to one side of it with a stencil. And although paint came off and filled my tissue with paint colors, it did not um, pull enough paint up to show that there was a stencil there. So it was just something I was trying. Um, I do think that you can go over these with a stencil and some color. I'm going to make sure this is dry. Um, let's just set it down right there. And let's get some... Oh... Let's use our dark brown. I don't think the dark brown will show up though, to be honest with you. I think it's going to have to be like a black. But let's just try a little area. Yeah, it doesn't look to me like it's going to show up very well. Oh, it does a little bit. Yeah. If you wanted to just put some little bits down in it. Nothing specific. I'm 
might want to use something a little firmer than this to do that. But yeah, it does show up. So we can get some interesting shapes using stencils in the background. Uh, the other thing that I would like to try is putting this through the um, Big Shot and uh, embossing something into it just to see what it would do. So we may try that today too and just see if we can come up with something. So I'm going to try and go a little lighter on paint and stuff today and see if we can get some interesting pieces that can be scanned. Now I think some of these could be scanned. They're, they're great papers for um, backgrounds and stuff like that so I don't see a problem with that. This one I think is beautiful and this is the packing paper that came in the Colorburst paints. And so I really think these are beautiful. Now on these, you need to wet the paper first. So let me get these out of the way. Not that I'm going to ruin them, but let's just get them out of the way so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, let me get my inks out of the way. And, oh, by the way, it stains and it stays. It stays in every nook and cranny in your fingers and around your fingernails. So today I have gone out to my husband's shop and I have retrieved some gloves. Now I meant to retrieve four, but I only retrieved three. So I better just use the two. I'm going to pull up my sleeves. I don't care if this shirt gets painty. It's a green sweater that I often wear when I'm in here because it's a little chilly in here. Okay, so I still have some of that packing paper. Now, what did I do with it? I kind of like the idea of using it. I think it would probably work better on a... Well, that's what I hate about gloves. You need to have... Uh, you know those things they used to put on nylons to hold them up? <laughs> I'm showing my age here. Um, I need those on here and then they attach to my upper arms. Or maybe I just need glove suspenders. Or rubber band, maybe. Anyway, this paper is thin. And I thought, you know, that would make a nice... Oh, let me get rid of my... I don't want my ink... Um, dauber to get all wet. Um, I thought with these it, they'd make good pieces for collage. So I'm going to start right over here. Can you see that? Okay, I'm going to start right over here. I'm going to get it wet. I don't know. I don't know how wet it's supposed to be. And we're going to start with Is this some, I don't know if I have the right paints. I guess it doesn't even matter what ones we use. Um, okay, the Moroccan has not this, yeah. This is it, okay. So you squeeze it just a little bit and the color is supposed to come out. And you see that it starts to spread. I don't really want to put out too much at once. Okay. So apparently this is not wet enough. But let's see what happens if we missed it. Hmm. 
And you can see I've got some other colors on there already, just from just from this um, being on top of this, I'm sure. Oh, isn't that pretty? Let's skip that little squirt again. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now, it does say you can take a heat gun to it, which will move the colors around. So, I have my heat gun. Let's try it. I don't see it really spreading it around. No, I don't think that'll work. I think we need something a little stronger than that. So I'm going to get that a little wetter. So this is just uh, paint and play today. Or paint and play. Because I don't know that you could call this really me painting, but... Um, Okay, should we add another color to it in the Moroccan pack? Oh, let's try the scarlet. Here's the scarlet. Yellow and scarlet might look like a sunset. I don't suppose we want to put it everywhere. But gosh, I can't help myself. You know, it's so light when you put it on. You're not sure what it's going to do. You see that? Okay. Here we go. Now, one thing about this paper is that it wrinkles. So the colors are going to kind of go wherever the wrinkles let it go. I'm trying to look at the camera as I do this and so I definitely think we need some sort of a pink or purple in there. So I'm going to go back here and pick up the peony or peony, however you want to say it. I don't know how long these little six gram things will last for. Um, probably not long. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? What that did? Isn't that awesome? Try and straighten out the paper a little bit and see what it does. It's just kind of running into that now. I love this look here. Can right here. See how it just kind of moved the paint out a little bit. What if we move some color into it? I don't want it to mix up into a bunch of solid colors really. just trying to get some of these other areas to move. Look at the dots in here. Can you see that? Right, let me scoot this over. Okay, watching over here.
Isn't that some beautiful colors in there? I don't like that straight line across there, so let's move it a little bit. Okay, so well, we've got some pretty colors started there for something. I don't know what. But looks like I could back that out just a little bit. There we go. We've got kind of a solid patch there, but you know, that's kind of, um, that's kind of a neat floral shape in there. So I kind of like that. Uh, I wonder if we should add some, a little bit of green in there. This is olive green. It may not be as light as I would like. So I'm going to come back here and pick, oh, that's a Naples yellow, sap green. Let's try this. This might be more yellow. Yeah, it looks yellow. And it's hardly coming out. Makes me wonder how much is in there. You can't fill it. It's so light that you can't even fill it inside the container. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can find some of it. It's really more of a yellow green. Oh, look at that. Did you see that move over here? Oh boy, that's pretty. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? We have some really beautiful colors there to work with. Okay, now as I move this down, the wetness underneath is going to soak through and probably some of this color will be on there. So, let's see, right there. Let me flip this around the other way. I have more room going the other way. Okay, so we'll work right here. Okay, now it does say to wet it first, but maybe it wants you to this paper absorbs the water really super fast. So let's try a small area and this time we're going to try some blue. <gasps> Whoa, that one really comes out fast. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Wowie. That is pretty, pretty, pretty. Isn't that awesome? Okay, I'm going to give it another little spritz here. Here. We'll see if it moves anymore. Let me see if I can 
move the color out a little bit. So the blue comes out, this blue came out very, very fast and put a lot of color down right away. Um, don't think I want it to do that either. So I'm going to add lots of water over here. Oh, look at all the little blue specks that came out of there. Um, let's try this yellow ochre. Hmm. See, now that's kind of a dry spot there. And so it didn't do much with it. I'm trying to direct it at that, but it it just doesn't want to go there. Oh, it's running down into my pink. But that's okay. It actually is not bad. I can see some here that's still in a powdery shape. Can you see that right there? And it apparently is going to stay in kind of a powdery shape. Same way here. Let's touch it and see what it does. Kind of break up the crystals a little bit. Ooh. Trying to splash myself. Okay. Well, I think that is too much water at once. I think I like it better lightly sprayed. And then I wanted to try this wisteria. And I'm going to try it with that pink again. Can you see that over there? No, I don't have it in camera. I'm glad you said something. My goodness. We can't have that. So you can see that it's kind of... Let's do this. Put it on the back and see what happens when it absorbs that way instead of just spraying the color. Um, it does move and it makes some interesting shapes that way. And it makes some interesting dots. Yeah. But then when you spray it, okay, I'm going to spray right here. Okay. So basically this is a watercolor paint powder. Um, from what I understand, this is um, it's made in the USA. Sprinkle directly on wet surface, apply with the wet brush or dissolve in water and use like a watercolor paint. Speed dry with heat tool. It's a highly concentrated microfine powder colorant to be used with water on porous surfaces. OK. 
Okay, so we did that one. We have some interesting, definitely some interesting colors going here. Let's put this one to the back. Get my water out of the way again. And you can see, I hope that's not going through to my table, but it might be. Let's see if I can absorb it up with this. Oh, I should have brought some tags along. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Very pretty. <laughs> My handprint is there. There's a hand in there. You see that hand? I do. Okay, so we have that. Now let's, um, what should we try next? Let's try the burnt orange. And this time I'm just going to sprinkle. And then we'll spray. Sound okay? And I think maybe we'll add a little scarlet with it, if I can find it. Cadmium scarlet. Oh yeah, it's the one that really spreads. And let's see. I'm going to give it, oh, I lost my blue, what do I do with it? <laughs> she lost the blue! Let's see, that's a Naples yellow, let's try that. We should get something out of that. Okay, here we go. Let me get that up there for you. Oops, stuck in my hand. I'm going to back out just slightly. Trying to get it away from the other one up there. Okay, here we go. So it kind of feels like it needs to be pretty darn wet. At least on this paper. Uh, perhaps because it's so thin. This is like the old paper that you would find um, wrapped inside a shirt. Almost thin like a tissue paper. So there's that. I think it's pretty with the little streaks in it. See that? Yeah. So here's the other one as it's drying. It's very pretty. I love this. I think that is so pretty. Now the blue came out in one big thing, and so it made a big wash of blue. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? 
Oh my goodness. And so we'll let this one dry. I don't want to move it too much more. Ooh, I do like this little bit of blue coming down here. See that? It's just a touch of blue up there. Just a touch. Where did my blue go? Oh, I put it way back there. Let's see what happens. If we put just a little bit of blue up there. Ready? You see it up here? Okay, here we go. I'll try and squirt it at an angle so you can see it. But you can see how quickly that blue spreads. I mean, it is just pow, and away it goes. We'll just kind of rotate it around and see where it goes. See it kind of spreading out there as it hits the little bits of powder. And then down here was some of the powder and you can see that it just made little blue speckles and that beautiful blue right there. So it really does create some interesting papers and definitely, you know, excellent backgrounds. Okay, so let me put this, I don't know where, I don't have a place. Um, I'll have to make a place, I forgot. I forgot to do that part. There's a little bit left on this end, so I'm just spraying it to kind of pick up the colors. We still have this handprint to do, too. We should do something with that. You never know what might happen. Hi, Luigi. Hi. Yeah, I see you. Okay, so here is a burnt umber. Let's see what it does. Sometimes burnt umber can just be really brown. And sometimes it can be really beautiful. You know, when I say really brown, I mean dark, like ink. But sometimes you use it, and it's got a beautiful orangey tint to it. And I just love it when it's like that. Let's put some yellow with it. I could use these up in a day. I'm sure. Now this is indigo. Let's see what happens. Hi Luigi. You can't come up. <laughs> you have painty, painty paws. Oh yeah, look at that. It is one of those beautiful brown colors that's just rich. That was the word I was looking for. Just a beautiful, rich color. And that indigo, wow. Look at that. You see all that? You see how rich that looks? Oh, doesn't it remind you of going out and seeing the mushrooms in the woods? That's what it reminds me of. When you come upon them and they're just so beautifully formed and sticking up by a tree with ferns around it. And oh, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. The rich, rich soil. Oh, I love it. Look at this pretty piece right here. I'm going to show it to you. See how pretty that is? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love this. 
I love the woodsy feel of it. It needs a green in it though, doesn't it? So let's go with this one. I don't know what it will do. Let's find out. It may just turn turn to nothing. Oh, it's a blue green. Uh oh, I ran out of water. Hang on. I have another one with a bigger spray back here. That might make it look different with a heavier spray. So what I really want is some green right down in here. Stay out of the garbage, Luigi. He's like, but mom, there's plastic in this here garbage. Did you know that? He likes plastic. I'm so afraid I'm going to have to take him to the vet someday because he's going to be choking on a piece of plastic I can't get out of his mouth. So that does remind me of... From there, it just looks really dark, but... It really is a beautiful, beautiful... Let me see how far I can get that where you can see it. It's just a beautiful, rich color. Do you see? It looks like the, like you're looking through the woods and perhaps maybe there's a lake out here. And you, you're seeing all the beauty of it, all the colors. And it's just all so rich and wonderful. Hey, get down. You know I can't touch you right now because I've got inky hands. Get down. He knows I can't do anything. <laughs> he knows I can't touch him. Okay, so that one turned out really dark. So I'm trying to use up my whole paper. Um, let's go back to that indigo. I just want to see what it does. Oh, not that much Ange. Not that much indigo. Oh, here's a Merlot. Let's have some wine. Shall we? Ready? Here we go. Now, I'm trying to use a little bit softer spray this time. Oh, those two colors are quite pretty together. Oh, oh no, my paper stuck together at the end. Stop that. You guys can't stick together like that. There it is. Isn't that pretty? Somebody back there named Luigi is trying to chew on my tracing paper. Can you hear him munching away on it? Hey! What are you doing? Chewing on glue sticks. <laughs> oh, he got down. He was like, okay, I give. I give up. Okay, so what I want here is maybe a piece of sheet music and I do want a piece of tracing paper. There we go. So the tracing paper immediately starts absorbing all of this. So I'm going to shove it back there for right now and we're going to see what this will do. 
Uh, this is, you know, sheet music is very crunchy. I don't want that to stick. But, oh, well. Here it goes. But it's also, um, it might just fall apart here. Okay, this is a sap green. That doesn't come out very good. They need to put them in better shaker bottles. I can say that because I'm not reviewing them for the company or anything like that. So there is that green. And let's see. What's this one? Oh, this is the Prussian blue. I, did we try that one? No, it's a lot finer powder than that um, other blue that we tried. And, okay, let's go back to the Merlot again. I love that color. I'm going to put some oh, spray right in there. Right here. Let's see what it does inside of that color. Ooh, ooh, we're getting some beautiful streaks. Now this paper is not absorbing the color as fast. You can see it's kind of sheeting off of it. I haven't done anything to this paper to, um, you know, I haven't gessoed it or anything like that. But it's just kind of sheeting everything off of it. So let's finger paint for a little bit and see if we can get it to take any. Perhaps sheet music is water fast so that if it starts pouring down rain at an outdoor concert, the music doesn't break up. But look at that. I mean, I, it, it is not absorbing the paint at all. But let's see what happens when we press on it. No, really, it doesn't. I mean, there is a little bit of color left on it. It must have a gloss on it that prevents too much water from soaking into it. Interesting. But now it feels like it's going to totally fall apart. So it won't allow itself to get wet but it won't allow itself to get dry either. But you can see what did happen. The color did go through it and got on the paper behind it and ruined some of that color I had there. So I'm just going to set this on top of my garbage can for right now because that's a safe place unless the cat gets there. So I can see one thing that this needs to happen with this is when you use it, perhaps you need to put wax paper down and then each sheet take that with the wax paper and go put it away in a, a drying area because it immediately absorbs what's behind it. Or you could use a watercolor paper too and that would help. So. I don't really want to put this with that one because I don't want it to ruin that one back up there. But this one kind of got ruined by putting the music sheet on top of it. So here is a watercolor. Or, sorry, not a watercolor. Here is a tracing paper. Let me put a paper behind it. So we can kind of see what's going on. This is a watercolor. Okay. 
let's see what it does on a tracing paper. This is the Merlot again. So as you can see, I've just kind of gone around in a circle. So let's see what happens. Are you ready? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. It will wrinkle. I, I know that. But the idea for me is just to get some interesting um, things that I can use in art or in um, in my journals. Just to gather some interesting pieces, to, you know, papers and stuff to put in the journals. So should we add another color with that? Let's try this one. Oh boy, <laughs> I didn't even realize it was already spreading. Busy take, walk, keeping my eye on the little tube thing. Okay, that looks good. I like that. I love the wrinkles that are happening. So now it's time to add some of the, the peony or peony, whichever way you say it. Doesn't matter to me. So sometimes a little thicker stuff looks good. Um, I don't think it's going to look much different than the Merlot. Maybe. too much but I can see what's happening here is we're getting some really dark things in there so probably we need to add what color I think maybe a blue um, let's go with this um, Prussian blue the whole reason is because we know that it spreads a little bit softer than the other ones. I'm a person that just can't wait. I can't wait for it to dry. I want to see what it does right away. I don't want to mix it. I'd rather it got into the wrinkles and dried that way. Oh, but boy. That blue really got in there, didn't it? What if we... went straight down onto our watercolor. And let's go this way. You see that? Let's just see what we get. Oh, it's starting to turn dark again. Oh, Angela, you ruined it. But, I mean, look at when you put it up to the light. Look at that. You get a beautiful um, stained glassy effect, don't you? 
But if you put it right down here, I mean, it looks like I ruined it totally. But I think in the scrapbook, it will look pretty cool once it's dry. Okay. Let's see. It stains everything. Just be aware. Oh gosh, I got it on my lap. I'm glad I'm wearing my paint jeans today. I gotta make myself stop, you know. I gotta use my pretty colors. And then not overdo it with the blues and stuff. Because I put it in and I want to see it immediately. And I don't wait patiently enough. To watch it just arrive. So now let's see up to the light what happens. Oh, I moved it around. It's I'm still getting some good good light through there. Especially down here. Can you see that? There we go. Now the light's coming through it. So perhaps as it dries, we'll have some interesting stained glass type of look don't know. I'm not patient. Okay, I'm going to flip this over and we are going to be a good girl this time. <laughs> and I'm going to do just a little bit just a little bit of color. Okay, right here. We're going for a little bit of the pink. Okay. I'm just going to look at that. How we just throw it on there, Ange? I'm just going to move the dust around a little bit. Perhaps we can get a some sort of a shape out of it. Okay, here we go. Look, I moved it already. can't help myself. I see paint and I'm like, oh, oh, oh paint, paint, paint. <laughs> it's kind of like the squirrel. You know, we see the squirrel and there we go. We're gone. Okay. Trying one more time. This time I'm going to put the water down. A little bit of pink. <gasps> stop, and Stop. Okay. I stop. Now, right over here, here's a little pink and blue. What if, what if, I try a little, no, don't do it, not indigo. You'll blow it, you'll blow it in, you'll blow it. Okay, wisteria. Maybe I need to stick to soft color. Be very, very quiet. Are you whispering?
this gets quite wrinkly, so um, it has a lot of kind of where it, the water's hit the powder but not quite moved it. Okay, so we're going to come up here. And this time we're just going to do a little bit of the burnt orange. Let's see what it does. Oh boy, it really starts to move, doesn't it? Sorry, hard to see it down there in the corner. Okay, let's come over here, and this time let's put in, oh hey, here's a tangerine. Let's see what it, oh look at this, where it's mixing with the blue. It picked up a blue from, probably off my hands, or probably from the purple maybe. Purple and the pink. Okay, this is a tangerine. Oh, look at that. You see that? Oh, you can't see it. And how are they supposed to see this if you keep getting it out of the way? Okay, going right over here. And we're going to go with... There's an orchid. Oh, hey, we haven't used this one yet. Turquoise. Right over here. So this time we're going to get this wet. It's pretty wet, so let's try it. We're right over here. Right here. Ready? Oh. See it moving? I moved it. I wanted you to see what it was doing. Darn it. With the blues, obviously, you have to be very careful. Okay, I'm going to move this over here and we're going to try this turquoise again. Maybe if I can find it. Okay. This time I'm going to put it on dry. We're right here. And we're going to give it some water. beautiful color but uh, the powder it's kind of sticking together a little bit kind of like it doesn't want to separate from itself okay oh and I'm not supposed to spread it into the other beautiful colors See that? I spread it into the other beautiful color. So let's pick some of that up with this. See that? So we get a little bit of color on here.
A little bit on here. Oh, it almost looks like a bird. Um, let's try and pick some of this up. Oh, pretty. Pretty colors there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Let's try and get some in here. Yeah. Get some pretty colors in there. Definitely. Let's come over here and get some of this Merlot. That goes back on the garbage can. So it's not bad. This one turned really, really super dark. But if you hold it up to the light, <laughs> you start seeing the colors through it. But really, it turned really super dark. As it's drying, it's becoming darker and darker and darker as the colors mix together. So once it dries, we'll have to see what it looks like. It may just be fodder for um, tags and stuff. Kind of like this piece down here on the bottom. Just going to fold it over on itself. Now I hope this one stays like this. I hope it doesn't um, turn dark like that one. So. I am going to take it with these two sheets under it and put it on top of the other ones. And then we're going to try one watercolor sheet and then we'll call it a day. You can see this one's doing the same thing. If it's too overmixed or it sits on another painting or it gets too much of a darker color in it, then it just starts really growing into the darker stage. So um, that's not a bad thing because uh, there's a lot of pieces like in nature journals and stuff where you want to see that shadowing and stuff and this will be perfect, um, especially for collage. Um, if you want to make a, a woodland scene in, in a collage um, you've got a lot of beautiful color here, like, um, from the trees and, you know, and then, uh, some blues and stuff and, um, the purples are really beautiful over here. So you have a lot of good, a lot of good, um, a, a, a big array of colors here that you can actually use in collage. Um, in collage you need tons of color if you're making like picture art. So um, I don't have my picture arts out here but um, but yes it's definitely got some beautiful beautiful colors in it and you can see that I have sprinkled and when it dries I may be able to put some more color on it and so we'll see that might that might work okay we're going to get this one wet and let's start in one little area right over here you can see it's already picking up color and let's put in it um, the olive green since we've been talking about the woods. Ooh! You see that? Oh, it's mixing.
There goes a nice piece of color with the oranges and some blues. Very interesting. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? I want to show it to you, but I don't want to move it. Doesn't that make a pretty shape? Okay, let's do this one. Oh, pretty. I'm going to do this one right here. And then maybe right through here. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, we've made the darker woods area, so let's make some uh, green to go in our woods. Um, we're going to need and if we make a collage, oh, you see that? Okay, ready? Isn't that awesome? Okay, you want to see it again? Okay, I'm going to put it right in here. as it gets into the crystals and pops the colors. Very neat. Okay, right here. Was I off camera again? Oh, Ange. Okay, we're going to try right here. Let me put a spot down. That's the one we're going for. Ready? There we go. It's kind of like it's a sea anemone growing down, swimming. Okay, we need another green. That's a Naples yellow. Sure, cruise. Lime green. Let's try putting the lime in. Oh, look, we're getting some orange. Okay, we're going to put it right in this green right here. Right here. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Right here. Ready? It's moving. Kind of like a river. Trying to pull you up close enough so you can see it, yet um, have the camera back far enough that you can get a good view. Okay, let's try right over here. Right here. Oh, that was way too much. That was too much on my part. Ready? Let's see what it does now. It does make some beautiful dark green in there, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to add the Naples yellow. See if we can lighten it up a little bit. Oh, look at that. It's really making the green take off. Let's sprinkle some right in here in the dark part of the green. 
Let's see if it does anything. Oh yeah, it's starting to move. It's starting to pop up here. I don't know if you can really see that though. We must be on somebody's big call list today. Okay, I don't think you're supposed to move it around like that. I think you're supposed to just wait for the color burst to, to burst. <laughs> I'm so impatient. Oh, do you see it? Okay, let's get this a little bit wet on this side. You can, did you see what it did over here? Right there, look at that pretty tree it made right there. Okay, I've got it back out so you can see all the time. So you can see the whole chamali. Okay. Getting some beautiful blue greens in there and some purples that it's picking up from the paper underneath. Okay. The cerulean blue. Always, I'm afraid. It's the one I ruin everything with. But there it is. Right over here on this side. Okay, you ready? So on this one, um, you're really supposed to get it wet first and then drop the colors in. But... Um, doesn't always work out that way. Let's try the orchid. Going right over here, we'll get it wet. We'll put some orchid in the green. Oh, pretty. Look at that. This surprises me. This is going uphill and it's moving up over that lump into this area. I don't know if that purple will do anything in there. It might push it out and make some purple. Make some little purple spots. Just going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Look at this. That purple pushed the screen clear over. And this purple got really dark right here with when it stopped. I know I was going to leave it alone, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't know how. It does have some beautiful colors in it. And, you know, this is just for play. I don't know what we'll do with it, but... I do know that I would like to use it in collage and I would like to not get a paper like this one again. Although, now let's see if we can hold it up to the light and see. When you hold it up to the light, it is absolutely beautiful. See that? So I really think that although this doesn't look great right here, you could put it in a light thing and it, it would be beautiful. I mean, look at that. 
you get all those beautiful colors in there and you don't even recognize them until the light starts going through it and then it's like hello do you see my colors I have greens and purples and reds and blues too much blue but it has some beautiful pinks and oranges and some different yellows and then some blue that is absolutely stunning right here so i mean you do really get some beautiful colors out of it so let's go back and take a look at this one this is just on the paper that um, came in the i don't want to drop it on this other paper this is the paper that came in the box it's just packing paper and I think it will make very nice um, pieces for collage. And perhaps it might even make some nice backgrounds on some paper. Uh, this one, there are some good colors in it. There's some good purples. The thing is, is it needs to stay as flat as possible, really. Um, any unflatness and you get a lot of, of uh, buckling and so I think um, my personal opinion this packing paper worked great now this one although it has all those beautiful colors in it well when you flip it over I mean it's not bad look at that it's pretty get some very pretty colors in it but <laughs> my worksheet whew. unfortunately this one had to sit down on the worksheet and just get all the um, the leftovers so it is still really wet so I don't want to look at my table you know I have my new mat under there that I already got really super dirty oh yeah it's starting to come through on that so I probably better put a couple pieces of something under there let's put this under there there's one and we'll put this under there there we go that'll help okay Oh, you wanted to see this one. I don't blame you. When you're more careful, things can work out better. So this is the um, tracing paper. That's a beautiful turquoise. Beautiful purples and pinks. Look at that burst of color right there Woo and then back to a really dark purple and the merlot and then we have the plot spot it's a great big bug and then the one that we absorbed all the stuff on um, from one of these uh, this other one over here and then here is what the music sheet finally turned out like it did keep some of the blue and it picked up blue that was it was sitting on top of and some yellows so this will make a nice piece of music sheet for um, a journal especially in the art journal and, uh, so that is what we have for today folks Let me put this one back on top of there I'm going to put this one over there so that it will dry and then let's see we need to put another piece of paper under there 
and we'll just see what we end up with. And I know I had another one. I don't know what happened to it. Hmm. I suppose my cat took off with it. I don't know. Here's some coffee dye pieces. Let's put those under there. Okay, well that is all I have for today. I just wanted to play around with paints with these um, color bursts. The color burst powder. And let's see, those are all going to go into one box. Let me see the bottom of the box and see, I can't remember the guy's name that, that came up with him, but he is on um, Scrapbook. I got these through Amazon. He is on Scrapbook.com now with um, the Color Burst Powder but they're calling it something else there but his name is not on this box crafts llc has put these out anyway thanks for joining me and i sure hope you all have a great day and enjoy all the colors in life they're absolutely stunning and beautiful Talk to you later. Bye.